warm, warm days and cold nights. Um, what happens is the tree develops an internal stem pressure <laughs> and that has to do with the gases going in and out of solution as they freeze and thaw. Um, and it's just, it's just like if you were to uh, you know, have a tire and poke a hole in it, eventually it would bleed out, right? The tree does the same thing. And in order to recharge, it needs to freeze again. Trailer's a 43. Wow. 43. Smoke, though. You just, you just stoke the wood stove. Uh, I don't know. Uh, Rear chart. Cords, maybe? <laughs> gravity down into this float box here. So as water boils off, float drops, more sap comes in. <laughs> um, this is called the flue pan. And if you look at it, uh, it's really deeply corrugated. Um, it's like a car radiator in reverse. So the point is to get the heat into the liquid as efficiently as possible. So it's got really deep, deep corrugation. Uh -huh. Sap actually comes in on that side. Uh, that flows through to this side, uh -huh. uh, and what it reaches here flows down into what's called the finishing pan. Uh, that is a, a flat bottom pan, no corrugation. Uh -huh. um, it's hard to see because the syrup's so dark right now, but there's a gradient that develops from less concentrated to more concentrated to more concentrated to almost syrup. How does it uh, know how to go from one it's to the other? It's just this magic. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so it's a function of the pan's level, yeah, yeah. tilt to it. Sure. Uh, mostly it's a function of how long the sap has been in the pan, because that stuff has not been in very long, this stuff has been in longer. Okay. Uh, there's probably also some density things involved with the flow as well. But this pan works the same way off a of float. Oh, wow. Um, so as water boils off, float goes down, more sap comes in. <laughs> um, so when it gets to be almost syrup, um, we'll test it. Oh, oh, cool. Um, so you draw off some syrup and see where the where the syrup floats to. You do that. It's not ready yet. But when it floats to the red line at 100, 211 degrees, that's syrup. Huh. And what we do is. When it's at that point, we'll draw it off, um, open the valve, and draw off a portion of this, this uh, chamber here. Um, you can't um, ever run it dry or the pan will burn. Oh, sure. Um, so the whole system then moves along. More sap comes in, flows through. That's why it's called a continuous, continuous flow evaporator. So as long as you've got sap in there and a fire underneath it, it's continuously flowing through, flowing through the system. Um, you don't add anything to it except for a tiny little bit of deep foamer every once in a while that knocks down the surface tension at the back pan. Huh. Um, it's just a, this what we use is a little food grade glycerin that's made for that. Huh. Um, you could also use the old timers that had a piece of salt pork over it and drip fat into it. Uh, that works as well. Just to heat down the balls every once in a while. It's the only get added to it. And then from there we take it. Using a refractometer to measure the uh, sugar content. Two and a half percent. So the red line is true syrup, and we usually draw it off just a little bit before. Okay. That way we can finish it on a propane burner in the shop where it's a little more controlled. Sure. And then add minerals? 
And wow. this is what's called niter or sugar sand. Wow. Um, and we need to take that out because it would be cloudy in the bottles and kind of gritty. Yeah. Um, so it's a filter kind of. Here. It's just a, uh, it's just a felt and paper filter. Sure. Um, to take out the niter or the sugar sand. Wow. Then what we'll do is we'll draw it off. We'll take it up to the shop. And we've got to reheat it to bottle it. Um, so we'll reheat it to at least 185 degrees, which sterilizes gotcha. the bottles and the product as it goes into the bottles. That's all it is. It's, it's tree sap and fire. That's all, all it is. Um,